Oh, isn't that beautiful? Woo, great day. I don't know if anything is greater to me than seeing young folks serve the Lord. That just thrills my heart and my soul. You see, I've seen more sunsets than I am going to see. I've seen more sunrises than I am going to see. And so to see a, a young couple like this and serving the Lord, that just thrills my heart. And uh, God bless you. One thing I promise, promise to pray for you. Pray God might continue to use you in a great way. And uh, Jody, it's always a blessing to hear things like that. And uh, God bless you, my friend. His name is Jody Lee, so he's a good guy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Becky, I want to thank you for your kindness. And uh, you and the preacher taking Joy and I at lunch. And uh, God bless you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for everything there in the, uh, we call it the prophet's chamber. And uh, everything's always fine and, and lovely. And thank you so very, very much. And uh, God bless you. I, I, I've enjoyed the music, and uh, I've uh, you know I've just enjoyed the day and uh, everything. Join and I. One of the reasons I said you know I'll I've seen more sunsets than I am going to see is we just celebrated our sixty first wedding anniversary. So I'll tell you what, that's not uh, sixty one plus, and we're going on. I you know I I love her more now than I did when we got married. And uh, I thank God for her. She's been such a faithful wife. And uh, when we left the pastorate and she said, you know, just whatever you want to do. And we prayed about it and going with Mount Pisgah. And, and uh, this is our 12th year. We've had the pastorate for 32 years. And uh, this is our 12th year now with Mount Pisgah Scripture Printing. Um, we just believe everybody needs a Bible. Greatest book ever written. And we just believe everybody needs an opportunity to be saved. And they have this book that got the truth. And they can open, open it up and read it and know how to be saved. And uh, so this is our 12th year with Mount Pisgah Scripture Printing. We go into churches, we encourage them to partner with us. Help us with paper to print the Bible. And everything that people give and churches, it goes for paper. And I don't get any of it. They don't pay me any expense money. I raise my own support. Everything that comes in goes for paper. And I like it like that. And uh, we print. Uh, this is a Spanish John in Romans. We have our own Bible designer, cover designer. And she designs all the Bibles. And uh, this is an English uh, New Testament. And this, this is a whole Bible. And uh, let me give you some. Um, we have already printed... Uh, uh, through October the 25th, actually October the 23rd, got the uh, notice on the 25th, uh, uh, we have already shipped out this year, we have two more months, and from October the 23rd, uh, we have already shipped out to missionaries 1,455,090 Bibles. Uh, the missionaries will receive these Bibles free of charge. Doesn't cost them anything. And uh, they have contacted the print shop. And uh, we provide all of these Bibles free of charge. And But you and I know, ho, 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 there's nothing free. Right? And good folks like you, folks that love the Lord, uh, help with paper. And uh, keep joining out on the road. And uh, so, nothing's free. I want to thank you for giving. I want to thank you for your prayers. I want to thank you for your kindness. I want to thank you for everything that you do for Mount Pisgah and getting Bibles to those who do not have a copy of the Bible and uh, your prayers for us. Um, as the pastor mentioned this morning, as we were walking down the aisle, we've already shipped Bibles and we're shipping more to Guatemala, Honduras, Zambia, Africa. Uh, we're working on something for the very first time. Uh, we're going to produce a bilingual John and Romans. Chinese on one side and English on the other. And uh, we are working on that, and, and uh, I don't know when all of that's going to come to fruition, but uh, that's uh, what we're working on. So I don't know of anything greater. 
Oh, listen, there's nothing like this book. This is a book of information, but it's not just a book of information. This book of information leads to transformation. Yes, amen. Works in our lives, amen? And so this book of information leads to transformation. It's a, it's a book of confirmation. It's a book of condemnation. It's a book of salvation. It's a book of revelation. It's a book of manifestation. It's a book of, of uh, glorification. It's a book that is inspired. It is a book that is preserved. It is a book that is eternal. It is a book that is practical. It is a book that is enduring. It is a book that is powerful. It is a book that is precious. It is a book that is alive. It is a book that is uh, uh, full of truth. It is a book of instructions. It's a book on inspiration. It's a book of salvation. It's a book of condemnation. It's a book of conviction. It's a book of revelation. And thank God to me, one of the greatest things, it's a book of invitation. Yeah. Invite sinners to come and be saved. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. What a book. What a book. This wonderful book called the Bible. To this book I will cling, of this work I will sing, though great losses and crosses be mine. But I will not despair, though surrounded by care, while possessing this blessing divine. Thank God for the Bible. I want to continue the theme just for a few moments tonight. And uh, the preacher's not here, so we'll just quit early. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell it. Amen. And uh, I want you to look in the book of Acts. Uh, there's one verse I want you to see, and then we're going to look in the book of Romans chapter 1. But in the last chapter of the book of Acts, and this is not in the message or whatever, but it, it's, uh, it's a great truth. And I want to leave it because it's part of the theme that we've been talking about and talking about the gospel, getting folks saved, getting the gospel to the regions beyond, getting the gospel to, next door, uh, uh, to uh, those that we love next door. And in Acts chapter 28 and verse 28, Be it known therefore, the Jews have turned down the gospel. So Paul says this, or Luke, and uh, verse 20, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. Now I want you to notice the, right, the last of it, and that they will hear it. And they've been hearing it ever since. The Gentiles being saved, they're still being saved. And uh, overseas and uh, all of those places now in America, um, America's in bad shape, in case you haven't noticed, but you have noticed. America is in bad shape. They have turned their back on God. They have turned their back on the gospel. They have turned their back on morality. But it's not, it's not like that everywhere in the world. And uh, so the Gentiles will hear it. And uh, they have, and I could tell you a lot of stories, but let's hasten on tonight to the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. You know, one of the greatest things that you can be is not somebody with authority or somebody that we think we are somebody, just being a servant for the Lord. Yeah. Just being a servant. We all ought to be servants. And not being somebody, just saying, Lord, here am I. Lord, what can I do for you? What can I do for the church? What can I do for others? Just being a servant. There's not a greater thing in God's eyes than being a servant. So Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. By the way, I want to say this. Did you notice he considered himself being a servant before he considered himself being an apostle? He calls himself a servant first. And then he says in verse 1, an apostle separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised to avoid by a uh, uh, prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Not just scriptures, but holy scriptures. This book written by God, all scriptures given by inspiration and is profitable. The doctrine for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect through the furnishing of all good works. So the Bible is inspired. Peter said, uh, the, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were born along by the Holy Ghost. And so we know that the Bible is a book 66 books, 1189 chapters. It is a book of holy writ, a book of holy scriptures. And all through it, the next verse tells us concerning his son Jesus Christ. 
All the way back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 and all through the Bible, we have pictures of our Lord. All the feast days, all the holy days, all the holidays in the Old Testament are a picture of Jesus Christ. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. For what purpose? Paul is saying. By whom we have received grace and apostleship. Paul, why did you receive grace? Why didn't God give you? Why didn't God give you what you deserve? <coughs> Paul said, "I received grace, and I also received a, a, a apostleship." Why, Paul? He tells us for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. He said, "You know the reason God gave me grace. You know the reason I'm an apostle." He tells us for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. And then he, Paul is saying to me and to you today, he said, uh, I, you know, I just want to get this straight that this grace and apostleship and especially the grace is not just for me. Notice what he says in the rest of the verse, verse 6. He said, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? Just like I am. You also are the called of Jesus Christ. And then he, notice in verse 7, he gives unto those to whom he is writing, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to continue the theme on that little word first that's found quite a few times in the Bible. Things that we need to keep first. Notice what he said in verse 8 now. First, he said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. One of the great characteristics in the Christian life is, is being thankful. Would you agree with that statement? Amen. You're quiet on me tonight. I know it's been a long day. Especially those of you that got up early in the 10th of the morning service. It's been a long day. And I told him this morning, I said, Ah, oh, I know what you think. The early bird gets the worm. I said, Oh, the early worm loses sleep. <laughs> But he said, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. I think when you get older, I know in my instance, I'm more thankful. I mean, even for the small things. Just like cleaning up the mess my wife makes in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm thankful I can do that. Especially since I sit down to some of those old homemade biscuits and all of those things that she uh, makes. And I told her, I said, honey, you do the cooking, I'll do the cleaning. We just got along with that, amen? She does the cooking, I do the cleaning. She loves it too. <laughs> but I'm thankful. Aren't you thankful? You know, thankful just for small things. Thankful that you can see, like I said this morning. Thankful you can walk. Thankful you can break leaves. Don't curse the wind. Thank God you got two arms and two legs and you're able to do it. Can I get an amen? amen. I mean, thank God for everything that you can do. Because it's a blessing. There's so many who can't do anything. And so Paul said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. I thank God for Cashmere Baptist Church. Thank God for friends. You ought to thank God for thank God for preachers. Where's Harry? There it is. Okay, send us back that same day. Good song this morning going about preachers. Thank God for your preachers. Thank God for your preacher's life. Thank God for others in the church. You know, one of the things Joy and I talk about, and we, oh, I tell you what, it's just been a good day when you come and the church has a good spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah. Love each other, care for each other, 
knowing not everybody's perfect. So I'm putting up with a lot of folks. Can I get another amen? <laughs> but it's thanking God for all those things. But here's what the apostle thanked God first of all for these folks. Now notice what he said in verse 8. He said, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. He said, first thing, I, you know, he said, I thank God that your faith, your faith, your faith in Jesus Christ is spoken of throughout the whole world. What a faith, amen? I say to you tonight, and of course you know if you're saved, there's not anything greater than knowing the Lord. I know, listen, we get a lot of benefits, don't we, by being saved. I mean, all kinds of benefits by coming to the Lord. But there's not anything greater. And we need to keep this before us. And uh, in all times and in times of prosperity and in times of trouble and in times of heartache and in all of these times that we come, uh, these things that come in our life, we need to always remember that the greatest thing is the value of a human soul. It's going to spend eternity somewhere. Heaven or hell, there is no in between. There is no purgatory. There are no second chances. And so this, and Paul is saying, listen, first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. I thank God for faith in Jesus Christ. There's not anything like it. Greatest thing that ever happened to me was the night I bowed my knee, repented of my sins, and received Christ as my Savior. The greatest thing that ever happened to me. It sealed my eternity. Regardless of whatever happens in life, you're saved tonight. Regardless of whatever happens in life, when you die, you're going to heaven. Be there forever with the Lord. Now, is that, a, is that not great or what? And so what the Lord is in faith promise and all these things, and this ought to be our heartbeat, along with all the other benefits that God gives us. And all like the psalmist talked about in Psalm 68, verse 19, who daily loadeth us with the benefits. <laughs> I'm glad. One, there are two things I'm so grateful to the Lord for, and uh, that is God's mercy. He's not going to give me what I do deserve. Yeah. That's God's mercy. He's not going to give me what I do deserve. And then he gives me his grace. He gives me that which I do not deserve. Right. And so many times, you know, I just, you know, I go through, God, thank you for your mercy. You're not going to give me what I do deserve. And then, God, you're so good. You give me what I do not deserve. So Paul said, first, I thank my God. And by the way, 16 chapters. And he said, I want you to remind, I want to remind you of this first. About your faith. And what you have is spoken of throughout the whole world. There is in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, we have what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Of course, the Beatitudes are there and, and uh, so forth. And these are a lot of good things through here to um, live by. And there's a lot of good teaching and, and uh, all of, um, of these things. But as I was looking through here one day, and I, was, I, I, I thought about the word first. And I said, I wonder, the Sermon on the Mount, did the Lord use the word first? And Holy Spirit used the word first. I mean, all through the Bible, he said, first, this is important, this is important, this is important. And, and uh, I found that he used it three times. And one of the times, in Matthew chapter 6, in verse 31, he's talking about all the things that we have. And he said in verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For I have all these things that the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father know that you have need of, uh, of these things. But notice verse 33. He 
God knows all these things that I need. He knows I need clothes. He knows I need money to pay my bills. I, I, uh, I need to make my car payment. I need to make my house payment. I need to pay my light bill. I need to pay my water bill. I need to pay my school's bill. I, 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 have, I need money for all of those things. i got to buy my kids clothes. And What is it first? Matthew. As a matter of fact, these are the words of that old. He said in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So what do you seek first? The kingdom of God. And all the other things in life, God knows we need them. And he's going to supply them. I'm just saying, sometimes... We overlook the most important thing. We overlook good things. And the good things take place of the greater things. Or the greatest of things. Paul writing to those in Rome, he said, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, in his teaching, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things shall be added unto you. So these things are first. There's another one. And uh, it has to go along with, uh, with the gospel. And it's found over in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Of course, we know that's where the gospel is. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Beginning in verse 1. He said, Well, the brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. Uh, the gospel is wonderful. And remember the day when you heard the good news? Jesus would forgive you your sins. Take you to heaven when you die. Remember that good news? The greatest news you ever received. Amen. He said, More of a brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you receive wherein and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you. What's the word? First. I deliver unto you first of all. That which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. I deliver unto you first of all. The most important thing. Ears could hear. Heart could ever feel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's the reason we need to give to faith promise mission. Get the gospel around the world. Thank God for the gospel. Thank God for the scriptures. Aren't you glad you got a Bible? Amen. The majority of the world doesn't. The majority of the world has no idea how to be saved. They don't want to have it. They don't even have a Bible. That's one of the reasons Paul said in, here in Romans chapter 1 and on, on over a few verses, uh, he said, I'm a devil. I'm a debtor. And you're a debtor. And we're a debtor to get the gospel around the world. I thank God for the scriptures. I thank God that we serve a God who never changes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves me as much today as he'll love me tomorrow. His love doesn't change. His compassion doesn't change. His heart doesn't change. He's the same. In a world where everything changes, God doesn't. His word doesn't. His love doesn't. His power doesn't. His compassion doesn't. God doesn't change. 
Somebody said, well, I'll do this and do that. And maybe God loves you more. I love them more. No, God can't love you anymore. They already love you. Right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's one other thing that, that uh, y'all yeah, want to say in closing tonight. There are other things here, but when you think of the when you think of this thing first, this is a very unusual, but if you went to the book of Leviticus, when you came to the book of Leviticus, you began studying the book of Leviticus. What you would find in the book of Leviticus is the burnt offering. After you got through reading Leviticus chapter 1, and when you came to chapter 2 of the book of Leviticus, you would find the meat offering, or the meal offering. And then, and as you read the Bible, you read through chapter 2, and you came to the, uh, the third chapter of the book of Leviticus, you would find the peace offering. And then after you got uh, through chapter 3, and you came to chapter 4, you would find the sin offering. And then after you went through chapter 4, and you came to the book of uh, the fifth chapter, in the book of uh, Leviticus, you would find the trespass offering. And what are all these offerings for? Well, they provide a way, or provided a way, still will, later on. They provided a way for the Israelites to make and keep a right relationship with God. Secondly, all of these offerings, they are a type of Jesus Christ and a description of his sacrifice for us. <laughs> You look at all the feast days, all the offerings, they're all pictures of Christ. There's another purpose. They are a pattern for our own approach to God. Now I don't have time to get into all of that. Which one of these offerings was mentioned first? You remember? The burnt offering. The burnt offering was mentioned first. It is the only offering. You say, why? Well, let me give you five reasons why. It is the only offering to be totally consumed on the altar with nothing eaten by man. It was God's. Man had nothing else to do with it. It was totally God's. <laughs> The burnt offering. Just like we're supposed to be totally God's. And we take our hands off of our lives. Because we're His. It's another reason. It was the first offering mentioned by name in the Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 8 and verse 20. It's the first offering. Number three, it is the most common of the offerings mentioned in Scripture. Around 197 times is the burnt offering mentioned. We're God's, and He wants, he wants us to recognize that. The fourth reason. It was a voluntary offering. And it was a sweet savor to the Lord. See, faith promise is a voluntary offering. You don't have to do it. It's all voluntary. Do it if you want. And if you don't want it, you don't have to. So follow the church. You look at most of the offerings, they go at offerings in the Old Testament, not in the tent. At the offerings in the Bible, even in the times of Ezra, in the times of Nehemiah, they were voluntary offerings. Here's what I want to give God. Here's what I want to give God. 
Here's what I want to give to God for others because I know God is concerned about it. It's a voluntary offering. And here's something else that it indicates to me. It indicates entire surrender. I'm God's nothing else than that. And you know, I'm his lock, stock, and barrel. And I don't know where they came from. May have come off. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned. May have come from a bad place. Lock, stock, and barrel. Some of you old timers said it, Amen. I'm the Lord's. It indicates entire surrender. What's important about the burnt offering? First off, you mentioned it about me. Personally. See, if we look in the Bible, we'll find out things that are really, really important to God. Things that are first. As you and I go through life, a lot of things are going to try to take first place. It may be good, but it won't be the best. If it takes away from the Lord. And there are good things. We use many times the blessings of God that God gives us because of His mercy and His grace. And we use those things and we take away from God. To use the blessings that God has given us. And we need to have this written on our hearts. Our first, the Lord's. First, I'm His. And He's mine. And when we do that, we'll be all right, amen. I don't know about you, but one of the great things that I struggle with in the Christian life, don't you want to be more like Jesus? You know what? I think everybody here in this building tonight wants to be more like Jesus. And the thing sometimes that I become frustrated with is because I fail at things when I want to be more like Jesus. <coughs> Just want Him to have not second place, not third place, but help me out, church. He needs to be first place. Can you say that? He needs to be first place in our lives. And if he's first place in our lives, we're going to look in the Bible and we're going to say, oh, the Lord wants this done first. And the Lord and wants my heart right here first. And this is what the Lord wants to do with me first. And it's the thing of total surrender. I pray that in this coming year you'll have a great, wonderful faith promise. God will continue to bless the church. And He is. God bless you, folks. And I pray God will just take care of you, watch over you, supply all of your needs. When you're hurting, he'll reach his great arm of mercy and grace and put it around you and, and pull you to himself and whisper in your ear, Child, you're mine. And he'll always do that, amen? Now, I don't know, you may be here tonight, you've never been saved. Or maybe you're here tonight and God spoke to you about putting God first. Or getting this thing settled about this thing of first in the Bible and the salvation of souls and kingdom of God and faith and all that's first. I don't think God spoke to you tonight. Maybe you need to be saved. Maybe God spoke to your heart about preaching. Maybe God spoke to your heart about being a missionary. However, God spoke to you. If you need to come to this old-fashioned altar tonight, you come. If you don't, and you want to sit right there, suits me. If you and God are satisfied, I'm satisfied. Can I get an amen? And if God is really satisfied, it's all that really matters. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen.
All right, let's stand tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. You don't give us what we do deserve, and then you give us what we do not deserve. Uh, we are grateful that, God, you have allowed us to have a part in world evangelism and to getting the gospel around the world. And Lord, I pray you'd help us put you first in our life. And that you would always come first. I pray you might help us. I pray, God, we love you more tomorrow than we do today. I pray we'd be willing to serve you more tomorrow than we have served you today. Lord, should there be somebody here tonight that's unsaved, Lord, I pray that tonight they would be saved. And dear Lord, I pray tonight if there's somebody struggling with something, maybe it's a sin, maybe it's something, Lord, they need to give to you. Lord, I pray you'd help them with it. And Lord, I pray that they would surrender that life to thee. We ask it in Jesus' name and all God's